What is up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the European Volleyball Show. It is a big show. It is a big week for European Volleyball. It is the wrap-up show or the, you know, conclusions of women's fourth round, preview of the final matches of the men's fourth round. We will know our quarterfinalists by the end of the day tomorrow, and we will draw the lots for the quarterfinal matchups on both sides of Champions League on Friday. There is a ton to get to. Uh, we've got the the quarterfinalists on the women's side of Champions League are decided. It was a huge day of volleyball yesterday. We will get to all that. We will go through the eight teams who have advanced to the quarterfinals. And we've got men's volleyball this week as well. We've got a huge super match of the week today with Berlin at Zenit St. Petersburg, the first of a two-match series between those teams. We've got a lot of drama on the men's side matches the next two days that will decide who the eight teams are that make it out in that competition. So a ton to get to on this show. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, my name is Rob St. Clair. Let us know in the YouTube live chat if you have any questions or any comments or whatever. Uh, I will be looking at the chat throughout the show. Uh, let me know your thoughts as we dive deep into the Champions League fourth round. So let's get into it starting with the women. Uh, the Champions League women's quarterfinals are set. So we can go through the matches that happened yesterday. Let's, let's start off by doing that. So a whole lot of matches yesterday, Tuesday, February 15th, to finish out women's fourth round in Champions League. Only a couple of these had really significant impact on who advanced. So Vakif Bank beating Mulos didn't have that much of an effect. Vakif Bank had already won their pool. Uh, Monza needed to go to Finland and beat LP Salo, and they did that. Uh, we'll get to Monza in a second. Uh, this match in Pool E didn't have much of consequence. This one really, really did. So what we knew going in is that Zhezhov in Pool A was undefeated. They were 5-0. and They had played extremely well. They've been the best team in Poland on the women's side the entire year. And they didn't actually need to win this particular match for any reason. So they went to Kaliningrad. They played uh, uh, some different version of the starting lineup that, that we're used to. And uh, Kaliningrad, needing desperately to win that match at home, did so three sets to none. And that had a lot to do with um, who advanced out of the fourth round into the quarterfinals, which we'll talk about in a second. But that was a big match right there. Um, Dresner against Dnipro didn't have much of an effect on who advanced. Uh, Dinamo Kazan needed to go to Bulgaria and beat Maritza Plovdiv in order to really give themselves a great chance to advance. They did that. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, Kemik Polisic uh, traveled to Corneliano, the reigning champions. They needed to maybe not win, but at least take a set or two to give themselves a much better chance to make it out. But for the second consecutive match, Police was swept by Caneliano, so we'll get to the impact of that in a minute. Uh, THY Istanbul beat uh, Liberec of the Czech Republic in five. Both those teams knew they were eliminated going in. Uh, Fenerbahce had already won their pool in Pool D, but they still beat Beziers in three straight sets anyway at home. And then the big one, the biggest match of the day yesterday, which was basically a win and you're in situation in Pool C where there has been a ton of drama. Dinamo Moscow traveled to Novara and swept the hosts in Italy three sets to none. That was a huge match, and I want to break that one down in particular in a couple minutes. So let's take a look at the pools with all those match results in mind. So looking at Pool A here, we had Rzezhov, who we knew was going to advance. Um, Kaliningrad, because of the win against Zhezhov head-to-head -head yesterday, um, improved to 4-2 and two with 13 points. And just to, before we look at the rest of the pools, I want to go over the advancement criteria out of the fourth round just to be super clear about it. We've had five pools of four teams each. The winner of the four pools, of, of each pool, the winner of each of the five pools advances to the quarterfinals straight up. And then of the five teams who finished second in their pool, we take the top three. And the top three second place teams will also advance to the quarterfinals. So typically what we look for, at least based on history and past Champions Leagues, if you can get to four and two and 12 points, so you win four matches and you get an average of three points from each match that you win, that is oftentimes going to be enough to advance to the quarterfinals. Now, some years are different, and we'll get to that a lot with this. The women's tournament and the men's tournament this year are significantly different in terms of what the what the standings of the second place teams are going to look like. But 
if you can go four and two and get 13 points, so meaning one of your losses was in five sets, like uh, Kaliningrad's was, that's a huge boost because the first tiebreaker is matches one. I know a lot of the domestic leagues, the first tiebreaker is points. Not here in Champions League, so matches one matters first which is why Zhezhov knew that they had already won the pool because they were 5-0 and going into that match yesterday. Um, but it goes matches one, then points, then set ratio. And that will definitely come into play in a moment as well. So let me take a look at the chat really quickly, see if there are any um, any questions so far. Could you please compare the and analyze the performance of Vakif Bank and Moko Corneliano? Thanks in advance. Uh, yes, I will absolutely get to that as we go over who all of our quarterfinalists are. Uh, Moscow really surprised us, upsetting Novara, a mainstay in Champions League. I agree, and I want to dive into the statistics of that match in just a second as well. So, just to make all that clear about the pools and the advancement, looking here at Pool A, Zhezhov, we knew was going to win their pool going in, going into the matches yesterday, and Kaliningrad took advantage of Zhezhov's situation not having to play their starters, and they beat him 3 nothing at home, and they're now 4-2 and two with 13 points and a pretty good set ratio. So, as we'll see in a moment, that will, uh, I'll spoil it for you guys, that's good enough to advance. A locomotive Kaliningrad did clinch a spot in the quarterfinals. Uh, looking at Pool B, uh, Vakif Bank Istanbul. We are one of the very best teams in the world, uh, reigning club world champions, second place in Champions League last year. We knew going into the match yesterday that they had won Pool B. They beat a very good Monza team head-to-head -head twice, both times in four sets, and they really weren't touched by either of the other two teams in the pool, so... We knew Vakif Bank was going to advance. Monza, it gets a little bit more interesting because they had to beat Salo in Finland. Like I said, they were able to do that. They are now 4-2 and two with 12 points and 14-6 and six in sets. And so like I was saying, 4-2, and two, 12 points is a pretty good mark for a second-place team to advance out of, um, out of that second-place group and into the quarterfinals. But it was by no means secured for Monza at that point, as we'll talk about in a second, because of things that they were, that they were happening, happening around the Champions League elsewhere. Uh, pool C was the really interesting one. So th there was some drama th a couple weeks ago because Novara, when I, on this very show, we previewed the Super Match of the Week when Novara traveled to THY Istanbul. They ended up losing that match in four with a weakened roster. I had Britt Herbots on the show at that point, which was really fun to talk to her. So that was that had been their first loss in Champions League to that point, talking about Novara. That before that, they were a perfect 4-0 and and 12-0 and in sets, including sweeping Dinamo Moscow on the road. So... Uh, this time around, they hosted Dinamo Moscow, and because of the second-place tiebreakers and Moscow's only loss previously had been to Novara, the winner of that match was going to win the pool. Uh, the winner of that match was going to be 5-1 and one regardless and would win the pool. And then if, as for the second-place team, whoever would lose that match, it would totally depend on the number of sets that that match went to. And it ended up being Dinamo Moscow 3 nothing. And we'll talk about that in a second, but Dinamo Moscow wins Pool C. Uh, pool D, it was pretty much a two-horse race the entire t the entire tournament. Uh, Fenerbahce beating Dinamo Kazan twice, once in five. Um, great matches there, but Fenerbahce with almost perfect uh, points. They were perfect in matches one at 6-0, and oh, so Fenerbahce wins that pool. And Dinamo Kazan had to play Plovdiv yesterday and had to win to get to 4-2 and two with 13 points. So like I talked about about Kaliningrad, uh, four and two, 13 points. If you can do that, you've given yourself a very good chance to advance. Um, Dinamo Kazan was able to do that, four and two and 13 points. They also clinch a quarterfinal spot as a second place team. So that leaves only one more spot for second place teams. Um, Dinamo Kazan takes one, Lokomotiv Kaliningrad takes another, and Dinamo Moscow wins Pool C to put three Russian women's teams in the quarterfinals of Champions League, which is very surprising to me. Uh, last but not least, Pool E. Uh, we've got Amoko Koneliano, the reigning champions, a perfect 6-0 in matches, a perfect 18-0 in sets, and 18 points. That's by far the best performance of anybody in the entire Champions League. Um, this is not one of the stronger pools, but uh, Kemik Police had a decent opportunity to advance if they could at least be competitive against Corneliano in their two matches and take care of business against Azok and Nira Gaza. But actually, they dropped a set to Zok earlier in the tournament and got swept by Corneliano both times. So their final stat line, 4-2, 12 points, and 12-7 and seven in sets. So what it really came down to, for the, as far as the second-place teams are concerned, we had Kaliningrad. Our, our, we already talked about they advanced. 
four and two, 13 points. That will be good enough. Dinamo Kazan, four and two, 13 points. That will also be good enough. So let's compare the three remaining second place teams that we're fighting for one spot. We've got Veravoli Monza, four and two, 12 points, 14 and six in sets. Uh, you see it right there. That, that's that's the key number here because all of these teams, these remaining three teams, are all four and two with 12 points. So Monza is 14 and six in sets. Novara four and two, 12 points, 13 and six in sets. So Monza has one more set win than Novara does, and the same number of losses. So Monza ahead of Novara, and then. Police four and two in sets, four and two in matches, twelve points, and twelve and seven in sets. So just to compare that again, twelve and seven, thirteen and six, and fourteen and six. And because of that, it came down to set ratio. Vero Voli Monza is the eighth and final team to advance out of the fourth round to the Champions League quarterfinals. Novara and Police are eliminated which is just crazy, especially for Novara. Like Police, they had a, a, an opportunity in their pool where they all they had to do was take care of, of two teams below them, which they dropped a set to one of them. That hurt their set ratio. And they had to be kind of competitive against Corneliano, which they were not in two matches. So their set ratio was never going to be quite as good as a Monza or a Novara, both of whom played... I would argue better competition in their two pools, but it really came down to Monza and Novara. Monza beating, uh, who did they beat yesterday? They beat Salo yesterday, three sets to none. So they they had, they were in the house at 14 and six in sets, and they were eagerly watching this match right here, Dinamo Moscow at Novara. So going into this, like I said, the winner of this match was going to win Pool C. More so than that, the loser of this match still very much had a chance to advance. It all depended on the sets. For Novara, all they had to do was not get swept. If they had lost this match even in four sets, they would have had the same set ratio as Monza, and it would have gone down to points, which would have been crazy. We actually saw that last year in the men's tournament. And if they had lost this match in five, they would have advanced, and Monza would have gone home. Also, if Novara wins this match, Depending on the number of sets, it's very possible that Dino, Dinamo Moscow would have gone home and Monza would have still advanced. Or if Moscow lost it in five, for example, maybe they advance and Monza goes home. It was crazy. This was the, la the, the last really meaningful match of the day yesterday. And there were so many implications on this, not only with who was going to win this pool, but Monza was watching this match from a distance very, very anxiously. And I, I, can, I really could not believe this result. I, was, I watched this whole match and I was stunned that Dinamo Moscow was able to go to Novara and sweep a very good, like, top-level Italian team, a mainstay of this competition, the champions from 2019. Like, the list goes on and on. This Novara team was built to really be a Champions League contender, and they get swept at home in a must-win match, and they miss out on the quarterfinals because of it. That was a crazy result to me. So, like, look at some of these numbers. The, the, the score lines were reasonably close but Moscow I want to be very clear about this Dinamo Moscow was the better team in this match by far they were significantly better than Novara they blocked the ball better th despite the same number of blocks their their blocking influence on the match was was better they defended significantly better their offense operated much more efficiently it was it was a clinic that Moscow put on. They really earned their way to the quarterfinals and Novara with a big opportunity weren't able to figure it out in a do or die match so to look at some of the numbers, uh, Abrar Karakert, 19 for 40 in three sets. Like 40 attempts in three sets is a huge number. Um, 19 kills, seven total errors. Not great efficiency. Uh, one ace to two service errors, that's pretty good. Two blocks. So I wouldn't say Karakert was the problem here, but they would, would, would have liked her to be more efficient than she was, especially with a couple late hitting errors in the third when they needed her the most. Um, Katarina Bossetti, 10 for 26, only 38% kills, and you subtract the errors for efficiency. Her efficiency, not good at all. Um, the middles, I was very surprised by this. Um, Haley Washington, only 3 for 8. I expect a little more there. Bonifacio, only 1 for 4. I expect a little more there attacking. Um, Rosa Maria came in off the bench, only one for six with 0% efficiency. Um, 
Nika Dalderup, not good at all. Four for 19 with negative efficiency. And Britt Herbot's coming in off the bench. Only three for 16. That is just not the Novara offense that we are used to seeing. And Micah Hancock, the setter, had to get subbed out in the, in the third set. Um, serving, not good at all for Novara. 13 errors to two aces. And while they had 11 blocks, it's the same number of blocks that Moscow had. And they made 11 attacking errors just hitting the ball out of bounds. In addition to being blocked 11 times. 22 combined attacking errors for Novara in three sets is a huge number. That combined with 13 service errors, you're giving away way too many points for free against a team of Dinamo Moscow's caliber, and you're just not going to win a crucial Champions League match in that fashion. Just too many errors. Moscow, conversely, they deserve all the credit for this match. They played extremely well. Their uh, their passing numbers were good, not great, but good enough to hang in there. Um, 11 blocks is outstanding. Uh, 40% kills despite that average at best passing is a really nice number. Uh, Natalia Goncharova was outstanding, 15 for 36, only six errors. That's that's pretty good efficiency. Uh, Elisa Vasileva, 10 for 25. That's pretty good. Um, serving, much less errors, five errors to one ace. That's a much better ratio than Novara's. The blocking was huge. And I don't even think the stats really tell the whole story in this match. Dinamo Moscow was the better team. They really were. And in a do-or-die match with a lot of drama that had gone on in the pool the last couple weeks, Dinamo Moscow goes into Novara, and they beat they beat a really good Italian team head-to-head. -head. That was extremely surprising to me. So because of that, because of getting swept, Novara misses out on the quarterfinals, and Veravoli Monza here, 4-2, 12 points, 14-6 in sets. They are the eighth team to advance into the quarterfinals. So let's go over all our quarterfinalists one more time on the women's side. Uh, Zhezhov from Poland, they are in. Lokomotiv Kaliningrad from Russia, they are in. Vakif Bank Istanbul, they are in. Vera Volimonza is in. Dinamo Moscow is in. Novara is out. Fenerbahce is in. Dinamo Kazan is in. And Imoko Kuneliana, the reigning champions, are in. That is it. For the women's side, the fourth round is concluded, and those are our quarterfinalists. We, of course, we don't know the matchups in the quarterfinals just yet. That will be decided at the drawing of lots, which is uh, Friday. This Friday at 1 p.m. CET, we will draw the quarterfinal matchups for the Champions League for both the men and the women. Uh, I believe the way that works is that you take the four the four top teams out of the five first place teams, you put them in one bucket. You take the three second place teams and then that fifth and final first place team in the other bucket, and you draw one team from each bucket, and that's your quarterfinal matchup. So, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Zhezhov is the fifth placed is the fifth ranked first place team at five and one, 13 points. Yeah, Dinamo Moscow just edges them out in terms of set ratio. So. That that top that pool winners bucket will be Vakif Bank, Dinamo Moscow, Corneliano, and Fenerbahce. The other bucket will be Zhezhov, Kaliningrad, Monza, and Dinamo Kazan. So some combination of those will be our Champions League quarterfinals. Those will go down uh, the second and third weeks of March. But the drawing of lots happening on Friday to determine who. Uh, who's going to play who in those quarterfinals, but we know at least who our quarterfinalists are on the women's side. So let me take a minute after all that and go through the chat for a couple of questions. Um, we'll we'll talk about like my my predictions for the quarterfinals once we know the matchups, but in my opinion, there are a couple very good teams that had a chance to, to do some damage and win this tournament that didn't make it to this point, a Novara being... Um, chief among them, I think they they they're the biggest disappointment of the tournament for me. They could have easily won a quarterfinal match and done some damage in the semifinals, but um, they weren't able to get it done yesterday. Uh, I think the obvious favorites, according to just about everybody, are Imoko Kuneliana and Vakif Bank Istanbul. The whole storyline of women's volleyball has been geared around those two teams facing off ever since Paula Egonu moved to Kuneliano from Novara. Um, they have done battle in just about every world stage, Champions League, Club World Championships, the whole thing. They're both, um, they've both been incredible domestically, so it's easy to spotlight those two particular teams. But two other teams I really want to look at on the women's side are Fenerbahce and Monza. Uh, Monza, although losing to Vakif Bank twice, have added some pieces 
since those matches and could be even scarier when it gets to the quarterfinal stage. Dana Retke, the young American middle blocker, is a big one. Um, she made her debut only like two weeks ago and already in just a couple of matches for Vera Monza has been absolutely outstanding. Uh, she's been a huge pickup. And a very recent piece of news as of just yesterday or maybe the day before, Monza making another transfer splash and picking up the Olympic most, most valuable player, Jordan Larson. American outside hitter coming over to Italy for the first time in her career and joining Vera Voli Monza for the stretch run. So it was all that much more important that Monza was able to barely advance to the Champions League quarterfinals because they went out and made that move to get Jordan Larson. And Monza's been incredible domestically lately. They beat Scandici three sets to none. They beat Conegliano in four, despite losing to Novara once. They've had some big matches here recently, but they're going to get even more reinforcements in the form of Jordan Larson. So Monza is looking to do some serious damage, and I think Fenerbahce is as well. I think Fenerbahce is really, really good. Um, Arena Fedorovseva, the young Russian superstar, is just having an incredible year. Uh, Melissa Vargas, since coming back from Asia, played her first half of the season there. Uh, that team is built to do some serious damage as well, and they can they can serve just about anybody off the floor and totally turn a match in their favor. So those four teams I've, I've definitely got my eye on right now. Uh, Caneliano, Vakif Bank, Monza and uh, Fenerbahce, but the three Russian teams and the Polish team, Zhezhov, are going to be very, very, very good as well. Uh, question, how would the draw for the quarterfinals work? I just went over that. That's uh, So you've got the, f- the the top four first place teams in one bucket. You've got the three second place teams and then the fifth first place team in the other bucket. You draw one of each and that is the quarterfinal matchup and that drawing of lots will go down on Friday, this Friday at 1 p.m. CET. All right, let me scan the chat just a little bit more. Uh, Men's Champions League is coming right up in just a second. Uh, Okay. Champions League need to update, change the formula, suggested like 12 teams. Yeah, I I remember reading Giovanni Gadetti's comments about the Champions League format, and there are aspects of that that I agree with, but one of the great things about the Champions League format the way it is is the drama that it creates in that last week of the fourth round because the 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 margins for advancing versus getting eliminated are so crazily narrow that it comes down to set ratio it sometimes even comes down to point ratio which is ridiculous and we saw it this week with Novara getting eliminated only because they got swept by Moscow if they take a set it gets even more interesting if they take two sets they advance and uh, it it really comes down to the thinnest of margins uh, which is incredible in a tournament like this so it's always fun to watch this week Uh, looking at a couple more questions before we move to the men's side. Yeah, I think that is about it. So, uh, that, yeah, that'll just about do it for our women's coverage. Really, really interesting stuff. We know who our quarterfinalists are. All the drama um, all week long was, was pretty electric yesterday. All the, a lot of great matches, and we know our quarterfinalists. They'll be drawn into the quarterfinal matchups on Friday. So now... Let's move on to the men. Men's Champions League is all is in a very similar spot. There are a lot of matches going on today and even some matches coming tomorrow. And by by tomorrow night, we will know who the men's quarterfinalists are, including some great matches to be played today. The featured match of the week, uh, Zenit St. Petersburg versus the Berlin Recycling Volleys. Uh, that we'll, we'll, we'll dig into that matchup in particular in just a moment, but I want to go around Champions League really quickly because uh, so here are the matches that are going down today. Uh, Yashevsky Vegio taking on Friedrichshafen. That match has pretty much no impact because uh, Yashevsky has already won Pool A. Friedrichshafen is eliminated. Um, Nak Rusolari against Hebar Pazardzik. You wouldn't think this match would matter that much, but it actually really does. Um, these these two teams are playing a two-match series today and tomorrow, both in Bulgaria. And Nak Rusolari still is very much alive to advance out of the quarter uh, into the quarterfinals. They don't have as good of a record. They don't have as good of a set record as some of the other second-place teams. But as we'll get to in a second, as we look at the men's pools. If you get to four and two at all on the men's side, there's a chance that's going to be good enough because the the second place teams is just a just a bloodbath. It's been incredible. So Rusolari taking on Pizardzik, they have to win both of those matches in Bulgaria to have a chance to advance, and so that'll be interesting to follow. Dinamo Moscow against Zirat Bankasa Ankara. That's going down today. That's a huge one. The thing is that Dinamo Moscow has already clinched the win in Pool B. 
They really have nothing to play for in this match. It's in Moscow, and Moscow destroyed Zira Bancasa last time they played. But now, Moscow has nothing to play for. They've already won the pool. There is nothing stopping them from putting out a, an inferior lineup. They can play their bench. They can give some of their starters some rest. They don't need to win this match. Zira Bancasa does. They absolutely do need to win this match. They're 3-2 and two right now. Um, they need to go on the, on the road to Russia and beat Dinamo Moscow, which is not an easy task, but... Um, if Moscow doesn't play their starters, it's very possible. So that match is a huge one. That'll be live on Eurovolley.tv uh, today. Should be starting pretty shortly, I think. Uh, Maribor against Lokomotiv Novosibirsk. That match has no impact on advancement. Uh, both those teams are eliminated. The same goes for Novi Sad against Benfica. Um, ZSP versus Berlin. That's our feature match of the week. We'll talk about that in great detail towards the end of the show. Uh, Khan versus Trentino. This matters a, a decent amount. I expect Trentino to to win this match handily. Um, they've they've been an incredible force in Champions League, obviously throughout history, getting second place th this year or last year. And Khan is is clearly the the fourth best team in that pool. Trentino must win this match. And they, it would help them significantly to do so in three sets. So they're not going to take any chances. They're going to play their best lineup. And even though it's on the road in France, I expect Trentino to win that. So we'll look in the pool momentarily. Uh, Masaic against Vershava in Belgium. Uh, that is a rematch from yesterday. Uh, Vershava won the first of a two-match series there, three sets to one. But those matches do not have anything to do with advancement. This one. Oh, boy, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this one. Lube versus Zaxa. This is absolutely enormous. This, uh, other than the match of the week, um, Berlin versus NHC St. Petersburg, this might be the biggest match of all of Champions League this year so far. And it's so big because Zaksa Kedgers and Kozle, the defending champions, had to reschedule a match uh, against Lokomotiv Novosibirsk, the third team in Pool C, who is really good. Zaksa went to Siberia to play Lokomotiv this past Saturday and lost to them in four sets. And even though Novosibirsk had nothing to play for at that point, having lost to Lube last week, uh, Novosibirsk is probably the second best team in Russia right now domestically behind only Zenit Kazan. They're second in the standings. And they came out and beat Zaxa in four sets, like dropping the reigning champions to three and two. And now if Zaxa goes on the road to Lube, which is an extremely difficult match, if they go on the road to Lube and lose, there's a chance that they won't even advance to the quarterfinals to be able to defend their championship, which would be crazy. So, big spotlight on that match, and we'll talk about that as we look at the standings in just a minute. And then uh, Perugia against Fenerbahce. Uh, Fenerbahce is already eliminated, and Perugia has already won Pool E. So, this match won't affect much in terms of, well, it won't affect anything in terms of who advances, but maybe Perugia plays a good lineup for at least a couple sets to make sure they're in that, that top bucket of, of first place teams that are drawn instead of, instead of that second bucket. But we'll see about that one. A little bit less drama there. So let's look at the pools because there are a, only a couple absolutely crucial matches. Right here, looking at Pool A. I mentioned Jaszewski Vagiel out of Poland. Uh, the Super Cup champions in Poland, they're really the only team to touch Zaksa in the Plus Liga so far this year. They've already won this pool at 5-0, uh, 15 points. They play Friedrichshafen today. That match has nothing to do with um, with advancement. They, they've they already won the pool. And I mentioned Nak Rusolari playing two matches today and tomorrow against Pazardzic in Bulgaria. Nak Rusolari has a chance. They need to win both matches um, to have a possibility to advance and that's not impossible. Uh, Nak Rusolari, a pretty good team out of Belgium. So those matches will have a lot to do with it. Rusolari, 2-2 two and two right now. Not not a good point total at all with only four points. But if they win both matches, they get full points from both. They would they would hypothetically be 4-2 and two and 10 points, which in a normal year would probably not be good enough to qualify as a second-place team. But on the men's side this year, completely opposite to the women's side, there's a pretty good chance that a 3-3 three and three team w can and will advance this year. So let's take a look at all that. Um, Pool B, Dinamo Moscow, like I said, is already won. Um, at 5-0, and o, the worst they can do is 5-1. and one. That will win Pool B no matter what. So there's a there is a chance that they don't play their normal starting lineup against Zirat Bancasa today. Uh, we will, we'll see. We'll see what they choose to do in that match. But Zirat Bancasa kind of needing to win that. But even if they don't, even if they go 3-3 three and three with 10 points, even if they get no points out of this match, they still are very much alive to advance, which is crazy. Uh, pool C is the big one. Uh, so 
Lube 5-0. and They've already won this pool. 5-0, uh, and 14 points. Great start for one of the best teams in all of Italy. Uh, 14 points. So they are hosting Zaxa today. They don't have to win the match. Meanwhile, Zaxa, there's a chance that they do. And I see people in the chat asking about uh, Lokomotiv Novosibirsk if they have a chance to advance. No, they do not. Because even if Novosibirsk beats Maribor, the best they could be is 3-3 three and three with 9 points. And if Zaxa loses to Chivi de Nova, the worst they could be is 3-3 three and three with 10 points. So there's no way that Lokomotiv can jump Zaxa for second place in this pool. And you can't invent, there's no chance you can advance as a third place team. So Lokomotiv is eliminated. But Zaxa um, has a lot of pressure. If they, they, they can really help their case by going to Lube and winning. However, they don't have to. <laughs> it is still mathematically possible for them to lose that match, go be 3-3 three and three with 10 points, and still have a very much a chance to advance because Zirat Bancasa would be much the same. If they were to lose at Dinamo Moscow, they would be 3-3 three and three with 10 points also. Then what, what, what Zaxa would need is for uh, Nak Rusolare to lose at least one of those matches at Pazardzik in Bulgaria because, again, the tiebreaker order goes matches won first, then points. So even like... Nakru Solari, the best they could do right now is 4-2 and two and 10 points if they take 6 points in their two games against Pizarczyk. The worst that Zaxa could do is 3-3 three and three with 10 points also. But the points are the second tiebreaker. Matches 1 goes first. So a 4-2 and two team will, audit, will be ranked higher than a 3-3 three and three team even if they have the same number of points. So any of these teams like a Zaxa or a Zirat Bancasa, who there's a chance they would will lose their matches today and are trying to advance as three and three teams. They are rooting against Nak Rusolare in these two matches against Pizarzik. They need Nak to lose at least one of those. If Nak loses one of those matches, they're out because of their inferior point total. They would be behind both Zaxa and Zirat Bancasa as three loss teams. But if, if Nak Rusolare wins both their matches, they really do have a great chance to advance, which is crazy. I'm um, they, I think they're, they would be by far the weakest team into the quarterfinals if they're able to get there. But it's very possible just because of the way the pools are shaken out. I would say this pool A is by far the weakest pool in the competition. Moving on to pool D. This is, this is the big one for our featured match of the week, both today and tomorrow. Berlin traveling to St. Petersburg, taking on Zenit St. Petersburg. So that match will be live, the first of those two matches live, and in about half an hour from right now. I'll be commentating that match. Uh, I've done a lot of research for this. Uh, Berlin versus ESP. We'll get into some of the details of it in just a second. But what you need to know as far as the standings go, uh, Berlin in first place in the pool right now. A perfect 4-0, 12 points. They've only dropped one set. They had one, one win by default in there, but otherwise they've been pretty much untouched. Zenit St. Petersburg a couple weeks ago had an extremely confusing loss at home to Novi Sad of Serbia. Like You might remember that match because you saw Zhenia Grabenikov at the outside hitter position. You saw Tina Ernat at libero. You saw um, no Politaev or Kliuka for ZSP. It was very confusing. And that match actually has a lot of impact now because of these two matches coming up between Berlin and ZSP. So the situation there is all Berlin needs to do is win one match and they will win this pool. ZSP needs to win probably at least one match because if they if they lose both, they would be 3-3 three and three with, at worst, 9 points. That would be behind both Zira Bancasa and Zaxa at their worst possible finishes. And then you've got to worry about Trentino and Pool E as well. So the, the race for second place is, is going to be really interesting. On the men's side, there's really five teams that are very much alive right now that are fighting for three spots. And I expect Trentino to get one of those as I think they're going to beat Khan on the road. So really four teams fighting for two spots. A lot going on. ZSP has a lot of pressure to win one of those matches against Berlin at home, one of those matches in the next two days. Uh, if they do, they can get to four wins, and at that point they would have a pretty good chance to advance. If ZSP were to win both of those matches against Berlin, they can win the pool. Actually, they would win the pool at that point. So a lot of drama coming down to the wire here in Pool D, starting off with the featured match of the week today. We'll talk about that in just a second. Last but not least, Pool E. I mentioned Perugia has already won the pool. 
Trentino has a great opportunity to go to France and beat Khan. If they can do that, they would be 4-2 and two with at best 12 points, and that would clinch a quarterfinal spot for Trentino. That would be the best of possible options for a second-place team, or at least tied for the best. So um, I expect Trentino to play their full lineup at Khan with a lot on the line, and I, I think they'll do quite well there. Uh, one second, I realize I haven't been haven't been showing the pools this entire time. There we go. Now you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, so, yeah, Perugia, Trentino, Pool E. Um, Perugia's already won. I expect Trentino to do just fine right there. Um, pool D, both the teams have only played four matches. All four teams only played four matches. So two different two-match series uh, coming up today and tomorrow. But Berlin versus St. Petersburg is the most important one. Uh, we talked about Pool C with Zaxa at Lube Chivadinadova today. Um, nothing to play for for Lube, but a lot to play for for Zaxa. And Nova Sibirsk is eliminated. Uh, Dinamo Moscow has already won the pool in Pool B with Zira Bancasa with a lot to play for at Dinamo Moscow on the road. But we might see Moscow play less than the starting lineup. We'll see. And then Nak Rusolari very much with a chance to advance. They have to beat Hebar Pazardzik in Bulgaria twice in two days, today and tomorrow. So that's what's going on. A lot, a lot going on. We already know um, four of our five pool winners. Um, pool D, it could be either Zenit St. Petersburg or the Berlin Recycling Volleys, but the race for second place and those final three spots in the Champions League quarterfinals is going to be insane. So uh, what do you think of this Berlin team? Recently lost their first match in the Cup, and that is a great segue into talking about this super match of the week. So, my goodness, this is a lot of information. Super match of the week, first of all, Berlin at St. Petersburg starts in about 25 minutes. Uh, I will be on the call commentating this match, which I can't wait for. Um, the first of two matches, both in St. Petersburg, both at the exact same time um, the, t today and tomorrow. Let's talk about Berlin first. Uh, I mentioned they're 4-0, and 12 points, first place in Pool D. Um, looking very, very good. Uh, this this is who I think their starting lineup is going to be, the legendary Sergei Grantkin of Russia at the setter position. Ben Patch, the American at opposite. Jeff Jendrick and Nehemiah Mote, the only two healthy middle blockers on the roster for Berlin. And uh, the Olympic bronze medalist Santiago Danani at the libero. Now, outside hitter, they've got a lot of options. We've seen Ruben Schott. We've seen Timothy Carl. We've seen Samuele Tuya. We've seen Cody Kessel. Um, all four of those guys can come in and play, but recently for Berlin, it's been Ruben Schott and Timothy Carl. So that's who I expect to see today. Uh, the, the question in the chat was a great point about Berlin because they've been absolutely untouched in Germany so far this year until kind of a confusing loss in five to Friedrichshafen in the semifinals of the German Cup. Um, Berlin was, I think, 14-0 and domestically in the main phase in the Bundesliga, now like 4-0 and in... Um, in the like the the playoff phase so far, they've they've been by far by far the best team in Germany, except for that one kind of confusing loss to Friedrichshafen. I know they had a big COVID layoff where um, they they their team had to quarantine for a while, which is why they're playing St. Petersburg twice in a row in St. Petersburg. But my question about Berlin is how can we compare them to the rest of European? like the, the other top teams in all of Europe. And I really don't know the answer to that. That's why I'm so excited about these two matches because Berlin's been so much better than everybody else in Germany this year. I have, I don't know how to evaluate Berlin compared to other top European competition. And this is going to be a great, a, just a great opportunity for Berlin to showcase what their, what their team is all about and what the Bundesliga level of volleyball is all about. Or, I mean, Berlin's level is, is significantly above the rest of the Bundesliga, but it's a huge match for Berlin. It's a huge opportunity for them, especially playing from a slightly superior spot in the pool because of that uh, random St. Petersburg loss to Novi Sad. So they've uh, they've got a, a huge opportunity here. Berlin does. And yeah, they, uh, there are... Good question in the chat. There are no foreigner limits in the German Bundesliga, so this is an extremely international team. They're, they actually have kind of a smaller roster, and only two Germans on the entire roster, and only one that we're likely to see in the starting lineup, which is crazy. So um, Berlin, a very international squad, a lot of Americans. Uh, you got the legendary Russian Sergei Grantkin, who I love. Quite conversely, you have Zenit St. Petersburg, who's extremely Russian-dominated. Uh, in, in the Russian league, the foreigner limit on court is two. 
and they went out this offseason. They got the best libero on the planet in Jenny or Grabenikov. They also got Tine Urnout, uh, who's been playing on and off. Actually, Fedor Voronkov I have in the starting line, my projected starting lineup right now, um, along with the just some Russian superstars. Igor Klyuka, Viktor Polotayev, Ivan Yakovlev, three of the best in the world at their positions. Uh, Dmitro Pashitsky, a very underrated middle blocker. Um, either Vronkov or Ernat, whoever ends up playing at the second outside hitter spot is going to be very good. And then Igor Kobzar, the Olympic silver medalist at the center position for St. Petersburg. That is a world-class lineup of just giant Russian firepower. It's classic Russian volleyball. And I'm curious to see how that matches up against Berlin stylistically because... Well, I'm, I'm hoping and I'm expecting ZSP to be healthy. They were dealing with a lot of health problems with injury and with COVID. That's why we saw like Grabenikov at outside hitter against Novi saw that one match. But um, they are fully healthy to my knowledge. I expect to see Kliuka, Politaev, like the whole starting lineup of superstars. And my question really in this particular matchup is can Berlin hang around with that level of firepower and serving prowess? I mean, you've got Kliuka and Politaev, two of the best in the world at the wings. And Comparatively for Berlin, you have Ben Patch, who, when he is having a great day, he can, there's a chance he's better than both of those players, but he's so kind of up and down that you don't always know what you're going to get out of him. You could get like a negative efficiency sort of day, and if that happens, I would argue that Berlin has no chance. But uh, in the middle, they match up extremely well. I think uh, Jendrik and Mote for Berlin match up pretty well against Yakovlev and uh, Pashitsky, um, both great setters. I would honestly give the edge to Sergei Grantkin of Berlin, both great liberos. Um, Grubenikov, the best in the world, but Santiago Donani is extremely underrated. And then uh, opposites. I, I think that the opposite battle is going to be really fun for me to watch. I, I, I would put Ben Patch uh, a little bit behind Viktor Polotayev in terms of my personal opinions of international opposites, but their play styles are honestly kind of similar, except, except for the fact that Politaev's a lefty and Ben Patch is a righty. Uh, I'm really excited to see those two go against one another head-to-head. -head. Who can carry their offenses? Who can score out of system against pretty good opposing blocks and service pressure? This is going to be a heavyweight fight. That These two teams are going to go at each other hard, high hard swings, tons of service pressure, giant blocks. It's it's the Russian style of volleyball that you would think would have a strength in that matchup, but Berlin has been just able to physically dominate everybody else that they've played this this year so far, both in Germany and the, the two lesser teams in their pool in Champions League, that I'm really curious to see how they match up in this format. And I have absolutely no idea how to pick this. <laughs> um, that's why I'm so excited to commentate this match, because I have no idea what's going to happen. I really can't pick a favorite. So... That will really be the, just about the last thing we do here on the show before we wrap it up and I hop over to commentate the match, which you all should come over and watch along with me. Ooh, I don't know. Um, I think I'm leaning slightly in the direction of St. Petersburg because they're playing at home. They need the matches more. They desperately need to win at least one of these matches, if not both. And they have a little bit more world-class wing firepower and experience than Berlin does. I think Kliuka, well, I don't think we talk enough about when Igor Kliuka is, is healthy and really playing well, he's a top five outside hitter in the world easily, if not even higher than that. I think we've seen peaks at times where Igor Kliuka has been the second best outside hitter in the world behind really only Wilfredo Leon. So... Are we going to see that Kliuka today? I have no idea. Are we going to see a fully healthy Viktor Politaev today? Like, being a world-class top 10 opposite in the world like I believe that he is? I don't know yet. What kind of Ben Patch are we going to see today? Is he going to be able to score out a system against the biggest block he's seen all season so far? I don't know. Uh, all those questions and more will be answered when we get started with the match in just about 15 minutes from right now. But if I had to pick this one, I'm going to go ahead and go with... Uh, Zenit St. Petersburg in four. I'm going to pick ZSP three sets to one um, in this first match because that's really going to set the tone. I think I think ZSP needs it more today, and I think that Berlin Berlin playing from a 4-0 undefeated position at the top of the pool there, the urgency isn't quite there the same way for them, and I understand it's a big opportunity, but ZSP, they... They need this match a little bit more. Playing at home, I, I think they the matchup favors them ever so slightly. So I'm going to pick ZSP in this one. And then tomorrow, totally anybody's game. It could, it could very much depend on what happens today. 
and I love uh, I I just I love when teams get to play each other multiple times because of the adjustments that they make based on the the matchup and all this fun stuff in high level volleyball. So St. Petersburg in uh, in four sets is my pick today. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is just about all we have time for here on the show. So I'm going to go jump over and commentate the match. I invite you all to join me. It is live here on this very YouTube channel. Uh, first serve in 15 minutes. Uh, the, the link for the match, I think, is in the description of this video. So check it out. Enjoy the Super Match of the Week. Enjoy this incredibly dramatic week of Champions League. We will see you in the Drawing of Lots on Friday. And we will talk more once we know the quarterfinal matchups on the show in the next couple weeks. That is about it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Rob St. Clair. Thanks very much for watching.